Every session is grueling. All the conditioning is very tough. There's different ways to go about different things. Uh, today, uh, we're running in the altitude tent to uh, take the speed out of my legs, um, but still work my uh, cardiovascular system at a high level. After every few reps, every couple of reps, I get Jordan to pop his finger in there, and basically it tells me uh, his heart rate, and what percentage of oxygen's in his blood. Outside the tent, it's 99. Uh, Jordan just then scored 80, uh, which is good. It's showing that it's that altitude training. When he's pushing to like to 70, that means it's a little bit too tough. The altitude needs to switch down, which is all right because, you know, set the altitude tent up to stay at 12% uh, altitude, which is equivalent to 4,500 meters. So it's on a very tall mountain right now. Go, 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 go! Jordan's been running one minute on, 30 seconds off, and that is a clustered version of one of our classic high intensity interval training sessions. So the classic version would be four minutes running at 90%, so that's the red zone, nine out of 10 effort, two minutes recovery and repeated four to six times. What we've done there is we've sliced it up into little chunks so that we can get more speed out of Jordan's runs. We know that intensity is a, is a key factor in the adaptive process. And so we've just split it up and we're managing his intensity and ramping those signals up for, for adaptation by just making the, the, the time frame over which he's running the intervals a little bit shorter and giving him a little rest in between. Four, three, two, one. Solid effort that, mate. Really, really good. Get yourself laid down. And one of the key sessions that we did with them on the curved treadmill was a 20 second cluster sprint where they were, they were sprinting 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, 20 seconds on, up to six times. And they were really going for it, really hammering it. And you saw that come through in Jordan's fight where he was, you know, he was going, absolutely going for it. You know, landing big shots, big combinations, and then having the, the composure to step back and repeat those actions as well. And that's what we've been really focusing on over the past few months is the ability to repeat those high intensity actions and for them, the lads to then transfer that into the ring. And you know, that's, that's all down to you know, expert coaching from Dave Colwell and marrying that together with sports science you know, to get the best out of our athletes and to get the best performance. What kills it off is the curve run after. It could either be a curve run, as in you're doing 30 seconds a piece, or you could either do a treadmill run, where it mentally, if you're doing a six minute run with a two minute breather, it mentally breaks you down. But if you know you can get through that, you know your opponent's never gonna go through the training, what we're going through at Boxing Science. So to get through a session like that, we know we're going all the way. So what Carl's doing here is one of our pyramid conditioning sessions. At Boxing Science, we target like time in the red zone and red zone dominance. What the pyramid conditioning sessions do is increase that intensity in the red zone. So when you're doing like shorter intervals, like 30 seconds on, maybe even like 20 seconds on, it's, it's quite difficult to get your heart rate up within that time slot. So we do the pyramid conditioning to get up into the red zone and then we switch up the intensity. So then you're doing your 30 second, your 20 second burst in the red zone and this is really um, transferable to boxing because we're working at high intensities and we're also working in the red zone uh, during sparring and during competition as well. Excellent work, excellent effort, come on. 10 seconds. Now you can see, now the intervals have got shorter, the recovery time is less, so it's not hardly getting out of that red zone. You now Carl will just rest in then and he's still in that red zone there, so we're now able to keep at high intensity and still be within that red zone. He's got that capabilities of like a, an 800 meter runner, a 1500 meter and even like a 3k athlete, you know, and, and upwards that we'd expect to see on the track. He, you know, he's, he's, he's definitely got all those capabilities in his locker, which he can then transfer over to the ring. 
and, you know, and, that, and that helps his training, it helps his preparation, helps his technical preparation and, and everything that goes with it. Okay, so this is uh, Gav's heart rate monitor. It's linked up to his iPhone and you can see here as working in this top zone here, the red zone. So it's 90 to 100% his maximal heart rate. And this is where basically he's going to be competing at when, when he's in the boxing ring, when he's in sparring. So it's really important for us that he's getting that conditioning in that red zone so it's replicating the demands of the sports. Most boxers, they go on to long road runs and they don't even reach the sentence. So Gavin's doing this on two, three times a week and he's getting comfortable in being un uncomfortable. Yeah, so some of, some of his quotes that he's been coming out with is basically, that's another session in the bank or he's making every session count. And that's really important from a psychological perspective, knowing that the training that he's doing is evidence-based, it's going to be effective, it's going to give him the extra edge when he gets into the ring. So Gav's just finishing off now. He's hitting 179, 180. On our test, his maximum heart rate is 183. So he's pushing nearly 100% his maximum there. He's looking comfortable, he's looking in control. Three, two, one, and that's your lot, Gav. Well done, mate. Good session, that. Well, it's Jim or um, the Sheffield Hallam and Danny Wilson, because it's one on one, so every session in the best out of me. SNC has changed a lot. Like back in the day, we do long runs, like long plods up mountains or up hills and stuff, and just a one pace, basically a fat burner, where with boxing science, they're making me hit me highest like points of fatigue and probably pushing me every single session. So, based on my fitness, it's only going to go up and up. So we've uh, put him on the curve, doing some maximum sprints today. We're doing a muscle buffering session where it's challenging him at like high blood lactate values. Um, so his muscles are going to be uh, throbbing whilst he's trying to produce high intensities. And these are the similar intensities that he's going to be facing on fight night as well. Curves are brutal, mate. Like it, I do generally dread going to the gym. Like it's not nice putting your body through pain, but when you finish, you realise that the benefits are going to be there. So come fight night, I've got that in the locker. Yes, 26.8. Brilliant work. Good. So what you're seeing here now is Santi Foul after one year. When he first stepped onto the curve, he was struggling to hit 22, 23 kilometers per hour. Now he's hitting 26.8, pretty comfortably. His PB is 28.5. It's not looking like an endurance athlete anymore. It's looking like a fast, explosive, high intensity athlete. So the session that Anthony's just done is one of our sprint interval sessions, um, but it's designed to help him improve the way that his muscles deal with acidosis. So when we start to exercise at a high intensity, acid starts to build up in the muscle. Uh, and that makes moving, it makes uh, muscle contraction, it makes uh, deriving energy very, very difficult. And you know, when, once you start feeling that burn, it makes it very difficult to run at high intensity. So one of the things that our bodies have are buffers and they enable us to, to get rid of it, essentially mop up the, these, these compounds that make the cell acidic and enables athletes to, to run at a higher intensity. So this session is designed to improve the, the function and the, the content of these buffers uh, that enable athletes to run at a high, much higher intensity. So remember that session that you did the other week where yeah. Tommy was like with you yeah. and, and raving about you back to me? Yeah, 25.1, your lactate was seven. Yeah. Whereas today, your mean speed was 26.8, lactate was 6.2. So that means you're, yeah, means you're 6% faster today with 11% less lactate. So you're able to push up to high intensities. So you're getting less fatigued at that. So you're able to push yourself to high intensities. You happy with that? Yeah. <laughs> Good work.